Did you know that for under 40 bucks, you can pick up a portable lightweight radio that you can take just about anywhere and listen to just about anything? Stick around and I'll introduce you to the coolest radio you've probably never heard of. Hey everyone, Tom the Dilettante here. Hope you're all doing well. You know, there's still a lot of great stuff I want to do with the Crosstrek, but there's no room in my garage slash shop right now, and the weather outside just sucks. So as a dabbler in many things, I figured I'd pick up where I left off a couple weeks ago and continue sharing with you some of the cool things I find about the radio hobby. Now, I'm pretty new to the radio hobby myself, and if you were to ask me what the coolest radio I own is, that would be a tough one. Is it these versatile little GMRS FRS handhelds that I can toss to pretty much anyone and get comms up and running? No, it's got to be some ham gear, right? What's cooler than the ubiquitous Baofeng UV5R, the workhorse of the entry-level ham? Maybe it's one of my mobile rigs, this Kenwood TMV71A that I use as a base station, or the Yaesu FTM400XD mounted in the Crosstrek. How about a nice HF rig and a 20-foot antenna that allows me to communicate around the world from my garage? Those are all cool and all, but I think the coolest radio I own as a newbie is this little guy. This is an SDR, or Software Defined Radio Dongle. I picked this thing up from Amazon for about 35 bucks, and with this thing, my laptop, and some free software, I can listen to just about anything from my garage. Seriously, I'm sitting here in my garage with this thing and my laptop, and I'm listening to local radio stations. We all need a place to relax and unwind. Air traffic control from a nearby airport. Wisconsin 3853, contact Chicago Approach 124.35. Local police and EMS communications. Call to her speed stops right in the vicinity, so district zone five clear. And ham radio traffic. Oh, Delta Niner, Mike, X Ray Victor, and you are tuned in to the CFMC Nyawa. SDRs do just about everything a regular radio does, except transmit. You can use this thing to listen to a variety of frequencies, and remember, there's no license required to just listen. This particular SDR I got from Amazon for about 35 bucks. It's called the RTL SDR Blog V3, and it comes with all the hardware you need to get started. It comes with the SDR dongle itself, a portable dipole antenna T with two pairs of extendable whips, a suction cup mount, and a small tripod. Not sure why it comes with a tripod, presumably it's to mount the antenna in a horizontal orientation, but I've never used it that way yet. Anyway, in addition to this kit, you're going to need some SDR software. The dongle captures the radio signals and converts them into digital modes for your computer, but the software performs all the demodulation, filtering, and signal enhancement needed for you to actually listen to the stuff. I use a program called SDR Sharp. It's free to download and very feature rich. I'll be leaving a link to the parts, software, and reference videos that I use to get started in the description below. Now using this thing is quite simple, but there's a few critical things to keep in mind when you start setting this thing up for the first time. Now I'm not an IT guy, but as I understand it, if you misinstall the drivers for this thing, one, you're not going to be able to use it, and two, you might screw up the USB drivers on your computer. So rather than risk leading you astray with my non-IT advice, I'm going to advise you to do what I did to get started. I followed these awesome instructions from this video by The Smoking Ape, and it got me up and running on the first try. So if you're going to give this thing a shot, I highly recommend watching his video before you get started. Okay, I'm going to assume you've watched or are going to watch those videos on how to properly install the SDR dongle. And what we're going to get to right now is how to actually use the darn thing. First thing you're going to need to do is set up your antenna. And the first part you're going to need to do that is this dipole antenna T. Now there's a couple tricks to setting this thing up right. So let's get a closer look at this thing under the GoPro. For starters, let's take a look underneath this cover. When you pull this cover off, you're going to notice that the coax in here splits off into two directions. The center conductor splits in one direction, and the shielding ground splits off in the other. You want the center conductor to be pointing up on your dipole. This dipole is going to be set up in a vertical configuration. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and mark this somehow with the grease pencil so we know which way is up. And put our cover back on. The next thing you're going to want to do is calculate what length you want to make your antenna. And that's going to depend on what frequency that you want to listen to. For our example, we're going to set up our antenna for the 2 meter ham band, or right around 146 megahertz. Now to calculate the length of a dipole antenna, it's a simple formula. The length in feet of your dipole antenna is 468 divided by the frequency you want to tune it to in megahertz. So for example, if I want to listen to 146 megahertz, I'm going to take 468 divided by 146, and that gives us the length of the dipole in feet. 
we're going to multiply that again by 12 to get it in inches. And then we're going to divide it by 2 to find out the length in inches of each end of the dipole. In our example, it's about 19 and a quarter inches for each leg of the dipole. So grab your tape measure, grab a dipole leg, and we're going to go ahead and measure it out so that each leg is about 19 and a quarter inches. You're going to do that for each whip of the dipole, and then when you're done, go ahead and screw it into the dipole T. Now the nice thing about this dipole T is that it has a standard quarter by 20 fitting. And since I'm just putzing around in the garage, I'm going to use this small rig clamp, screw it in, and clamp it to a post that I've got here in the garage. Next, unravel your antenna cable and plug it into the dipole. Connect the other end of the cable into your SDR dongle. Plug the dongle into your computer and launch your software. In this case, SDR Sharp. Okay, I know what you might be thinking. That's a lot of complicated stuff. Installing software, plugging in a dongle, measuring out an antenna for God's sake. It's really not that bad. Those 19 and a quarter inch measurements that I gave you will let you hear pretty much anything. Sure, you can fine tune your antenna depending on what frequency you want to listen to, but to be honest, to get started, the measurements that I gave you will let you hear just about anything. So let's jump into the software that defines the software defined radio. There's no way in hell I'm going to be able to cover everything in here, so the intent of this video is to really just whet your appetite and send you down the rabbit hole like me into exploring this thing and all it has to offer. So when you open the software, you're going to see this screen. It's quite intimidating, but bear with me. Once you've got everything set up, all you really need to do to start receiving the radio signals is hit play. And the first important menu I want to bring you to is just this radio menu. And here you're going to have options for the different modulations like narrow FM, wide FM, AM or amplitude modulation, lower sideband, upper sideband, Morse code and so forth. For most things that you're going to listen to, it's going to be narrow or wide FM or AM. Right now we've got too much of this static, so we're going to go and turn our squelch on, and we're going to raise this squelch up until the static disappears. Alright, so we got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's start with something we're probably all familiar with. I'm going to tune into a local radio station, and to do that, you can either click up or down on these things here. So if I want 1059. Going in Glendale tomorrow as well. The Blackhawks will visit Detroit tomorrow, the Bulls will host. You'll get a radio broadcast. So let me pause this for a second so we can see what we're looking at. So this waveform is going to show you the signal strength across the part of the spectrum that you're looking at. And on the bottom here, we're going to see that we're on the FM broad broadcast spectrum. I've got signals here and here. And if I want to, I can go ahead and move this whole thing over left and right while it's playing. So let's go ahead and turn on the play again. We're going to turn down the volume. And if you left click and just kind of hold, you can scroll back and forth up and down the FM frequency spectrum. Okay. Over here, you can zoom in and out. So if you want a closer look at a particular waveform. And to select, you can either hover over this waveform, click on it. Or you can even go down to what we call the waterfall chart and click on it. This waterfall chart is super helpful because basically it's painting a picture for you where the signals are the strongest. And right now there's a lot of noise. I've got a very high noise floor here. And so in order, in order to raise the contrast of this, I'm going to lower this down some so that everything else is in the dark and only my strong waves come through. You guys following so far? Basically, it's just a visual representation of the radio spectrum and the signals that are coming through. Now here's where the fun part begins. You can look up any frequency of anything of interest whether that's the NOAA weather frequencies that you might get on a ham radio or a GMRS radio. Heck, you can go ahead and tune into GMRS and FRS frequencies. You can tune into the 2 meter and 70 centimeter ham frequencies, and so on. To get started, I recommend checking out this site, radioreference.com. From here, you can look up things like your local municipality frequencies, your EMS frequencies, fire department, police department, and if they're publicly available and not digitally encrypted, you can tune in and listen to them. Believe it or not, in Chicago, I can listen to all the citywide uh, police frequencies. Radio reference will also allow you to look up things like local airport frequencies, so you can tune into things like tower, ground, and approach. And once you tune into those frequencies, you can actually save them as a favorite, much like you would on a web browser. So check this out. I've already saved some favorites, and you're going to find that here under Frequency Manager. And under Frequency Manager, for example, I've got the GMRS, EMS, local repeaters, and even... NOAA weather stations. When I click on that, you can double click on one of those frequencies and you can see they pop up here as highlighted vertical bars. These are my saved channels. 
Now if I want to zoom in on these, I can go ahead and zoom in. And let's go ahead and tone it up. That was a bad one. Springfield, and one at Bloomington. It was partly cloudy, with a temperature of 12 at Waukegan, and 6 at Kankakee. So basically, you've just turned your computer into a scanner. So I don't know about you, but I can spend hours on this thing. Armed with this setup, and the internet, in order to look up different fre frequencies, you can just start tuning around. And using that waterfall chart, all you really got to do is navigate left and right and look for a signal, click on it if you're curious, and start listening. It's a little Orwellian, maybe even a little creepy, but I think it's cool. Okay, honestly, we've only scratched the surface of what Software Defined Radio has to offer. And the purpose of this video was really just to introduce you to the concept and the fact that it exists, and, and hopefully whet your appetite to start learning more. It's an extremely low entry barrier at only 35 bucks, and if you already have a laptop, you're good to go. So check out the links I put in the description below for some additional resources, and go nuts! So I hope you liked this video, and I hope I've inspired some of you to delve into this whole software-defined radio thing. I think it's super fascinating, and I think some of you might as well too. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. As always, I'll do my best to answer questions to the best of my ability. And until next time, this is Tom the Dilettante. Happy exploring on SDR, and I'll catch you next time.